So welcome to my 10 minute talk on Devon Bat Survey, Landscape Scale Citizen Science. Firstly, I'd like to share with you why we started the survey before explaining how we went about it and what we've achieved so far on the Devon Bat Survey. <clears throat> so we started the survey for two reasons, really. Firstly, we wanted to get as many people as possible across Devon interested in bats. And we thought a good way of doing this would be to allow people to uh, find out what bats are about near them. And secondly, we want to do increase our knowledge of where greater horseshoe bats are present within Devon and also the, um, improve our knowledge of the other 15 bat species that are found in Devon. So to do this, we purchased 20 SM4 bat detectors. And the way they work is you input a grid reference and then they'll turn on just before sunset, record any ultrasonic calls, so bat calls, cricket calls, and other high frequency sound, and then they'll record throughout the night and turn off again just after sunrise. So to do this, we teamed up with 20 um, venues across Devon, so cafes, museums, and other public places that were willing to act as drop-off and collection points for each detector. And then we had a booking system online where you can book um, a survey square, so one by one kilometre grid square, and um, book a survey slot for collection and drop-off of, of a detector. So the surveyors, they would book their detector and, and survey square, collect their detector, and then set it up in their garden or wherever else they were surveying. They'd survey for about three to five nights um, between April and September each year. Then they'd return the detector and send us back the memory card with all the back recordings on it, along with a survey form with important site information and habitat information. So once we received the data, we then ran it through a classifying system. Um, so that's an auto identification software kindly provided by Stuart Newson and his team at the British Trust for Ornithology. And we chose auto identification software because we receive thousands of back calls each week. So the quickest way of giving people that have taken part in the survey their results was to use this auto identification software. And once we'd analysed the calls, we would then send them a report that looks a bit like this. So we've got a bit of information about Devon Bat Survey, some tables of results of all the species that they most likely had. And then we had a bit of information on each species as well um, for them to learn about those species they had on their land. And once we'd done this at the end of the survey season, so come September each year, we go through all of the um, species records, manually verify them before we send them over to the Devon Biodiversity Record Centre. And the survey has been a huge success so far. So between 2016 and 2019, over 2,250 different households across Devon have taken part. We've covered around 1,339 survey squares over the course of the four years. And each year we get about 700 odd people take part. Um, and over the course of the four years so far, we've gathered over 3.2 million sound recordings of bats across Devon. So here's a map that shows all the survey squares that we've covered so far. The darker the, the colour purple, the more surveys have been carried out in those squares. So some of them we've had around 20 surveys within those those squares, which has provided us with a, a vast, vast amount of data, which is absolutely brilliant. And um, some of them, we've only had one survey in them for the whole of the survey, but that's still really good because some of those squares have never been surveyed before. Those locations have never been studied. So we're getting really valuable data in those too. When it comes to greater horseshoe bats, that's also been a huge success. So we've um, so far gathered data at 779 sites across um, Devon. That's about um, a third of all the survey squares we've surveyed so far. We've gathered 6,586 greater horseshoe bat um, recordings so far. And um, of those, we've um, collected 2,635 records and sent them to the Devon Biodiversity Record Centre. I was having a look at the stats the other day and it looks like we've 
pretty much doubled the amount of Greater Horseshoe records that they have now on record. So that's a really brilliant result. And activity seemed to vary quite a lot, you know, across Devon. Um, we sometimes only had one pass for the whole of the survey in those squares and in other squares we had um, hundreds and hundreds of calls each night. So the highest we have at the moment is 695 passes on a single night on one, um, one survey site. Now here's a heat map showing the um, activity of Greater Horseshoe bats across Devon that we've generated through Devon Bat Survey so far. A lot of the activity is centred around, um, in and around the, um, the roost areas and the core sustenance zones for the maternity roosts that are in Devon, in South Hams, Mid Devon and um, North Devon. But we've also had some interesting activity in places we didn't expect. So we've actually had um, 13 records of Greater Horseshoe bats within Plymouth area and um, about five records within Exeter as well. And when I looked at the data in a bit more detail, I saw that what was happening was um, we were getting these recordings in dark areas within the cities. So within dark parkland um, and in people's gardens that weren't lit at all. So that was really interesting to see that greater horseshoe bats are sometimes found in these cities using these dark corridors. But it's not just about greater horseshoe bats. We've also gathered thousands of recordings on all the other um, bat species that can be found in Devon. The auto ID suggests we've um, recorded 15 of the 16 bat species and um, we've actually found so far looking at the calls manually 12 of the species you can see here in green and we're hoping over the coming months to um, to verify a few more so we're hoping to we'll hopefully get some um, around 14 possibly 15 of the bat species as we continue to analyze the calls. And this graph shows um, how many recordings we've possibly got to analyse so far. So actually the Greater Horseshoe, Lesser Horseshoe and Barberstell back calls, those are the true recordings we have so far because we finished analysing the data for those up until this year. Um, and all the other bat species you can see there, those are the, um, the maximum number of recordings we might have. So that's based on our auto identification software. So as you can see, the uh, the Pipistrel bats, uh, they're through the roof. We've got 1.2 million sound files potentially of Pipistrel, a uh, common Pipistrel bat, so, and about 450,000 uh, uh, recordings for Soprano Pipistrel potentially as well. So we're going to be working really, really hard over the course of this year to um, try and verify as many recordings as possible and submit them to Devon Biodiversity Record Centre. So what's next for the project? Well, we've got a lot to do. Um, the project as it stands will end um, th this winter really. Um, so we'll be really, really busy over the next, um, the next few months submitting as much data as we can to Devon Biodiversity Record Centre. And it's absolutely vital that we do this because through giving the data to Devon Biodiversity Record Centre, all the data will be available to the public it'll be available to inform planning applications, it'll be available um, to university research projects and to um, wildlife trusts and, and other organisations that want to use that data to help conserve greater horseshoe bats and all the other bat species found in Devon. We really want to share our experience as well so that hopefully other organisations can do a similar project to what we've done. So we'll be publishing on our website some how-to um, documents on, on how we sort of ran the survey in more detail and we'll do that um, later in the year. And we're not sure how, um, what the situation is really with funding but we really hope that we'll be able to continue um, Devon Bat Survey into the future. We've had a really brilliant response from most people who've taken part and it's been absolutely fantastic to have so many people getting involved and really enjoying and appreciating the bats that are, uh, are around on their local patch. So that's the end of my talk. Um, thank you to all our partners and funders and also a huge, huge thank you to um, Stuart Newson and his team at the BTO 
and all the host centres who've um, kindly um, helped us run Devon Bat Survey. We couldn't have done it without you, so thank you very much. <laughs>